we often talk about living foods. Why are living foods important to master herbalists? I think it comes back to that cleanse and nourish again, you know, and living foods are easily absorbed, they're easily assimilated. Living food being raw food. Uncooked. Raw food, yeah. So raw food in its natural state that hasn't been heated, that hasn't been cooked. The reason for raw food or high enzyme content mm -hmm. uh, food that would be um, advocated by master herbalists, mm -hmm. you're removing a huge amount of workload on the system. Okay. So you're creating uh, almost after every meal, if you're on a raw food diet, you're creating hours and hours of yeah. extra time in which your liver can go clean up the hormones, and deal with the clean up the blood, yeah. 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 deal with emotions, it's lack of suppression. Yeah. So yeah. The, it's a really massive topic, uh, yeah. raw I mean, food. I think raw food, uh, most of us here have tried extended periods of just having raw food. For example, Jenny and I always try to stay 100% raw when we're working in the clinic at the mm. school. Mm. And we find that not only does it provide more energy, but it keeps you very emotionally balanced. Yeah. And when you're working in a herbal clinic, you're dealing with all kinds of people with health issues. They're often very distressed mm -hmm. and they have severe conditions and they're very worried. So energetically, it's very, very draining. Yeah. But what we find is that staying on the raw food just keeps us really balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So when you have that sense of clarity and you feel more grounded within yourself, mm you're better able to cope with the emotions that can be thrown up when you're working with patients on such a deep level. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it really works on all levels. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. think we're, we're also sometimes surprised that uh, of all of the diseases we have and we forget that we are the only species that really cooked its food. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. no other Gorillas animal does it. Even <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, 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 but even a tiger that you know, does hunt and do things like that, they never, you don't Cook. see them yeah. <laughs> cooking yeah. something. Yeah, it's very the, the energy that is freed up, you know, when I'm working with people and trying to keep it really simple mm. and talking about the energy that's freed up it within di the digestive system when the body isn't labouring to, to digest, mm. that that energy then becomes available to be mm. rerouted for the healing. That's yeah. a good point. It's yeah, yeah, we people also really have, make that yeah. connection. They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, if all this energy isn't in mm. there doing that, yeah. it then can go to mm. your hormones, your mind, your bowels, mm. your broken yeah. bowl, whatever it is. Whatever yeah, because like yeah. you can see that with the pancreas, when the pancreas has to, like when you, uh, see when you cook your foods mm. and kill off all the enzymes in your foods mm. and then your pancreas has to produce enzymes to mm -hmm. digest the food. Mm. Yeah. But it also has a function of producing enzymes that heal the body. Mm -hmm. But it can't do both. Can't yeah. do both. So if you're constantly putting cooked food into your system, mm -hmm. yeah. you're constantly in digestive yeah. mode and you're not yeah. going into healing you're mode. You're eating so up all your vital forces. Yeah, totally. Really. So it once you so change that, energy. you allow that healing side to kind yeah. of kick in as well. Dr. Christopher had a program called, or has a program called the Incurables program, mm -hmm. which is for patients who have diseases which are officially incurable. Mm -hmm. He says there are no incurable diseases, only incurable patients, so he mm -hmm. talks about people's attitude. Yeah. But all of his incurables programs incorporate juice fasting and 100% raw food mm -hmm. diet, mm -hmm along with obviously herbs and natural healing routines. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean raw food, the raw food movement is huge. It's really growing in the States and all across Europe. And raw food cuisine is it's second to none. Once you've developed a taste mm -hmm. for uncooked, raw, plant-based yes. food, anything cooked really just doesn't do yeah. mm. you know, Tastes yeah. bland. And, and yeah. what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a key and yes. mm. nutrition is locked or unlocked mm -hmm. depending on the extent of enzymes that either mm. we ask our body to produce in the liver and in the pancreas predominantly or if we consume a high enzyme content plant-based diet mm -hmm. you have in its truest form a whole food yeah. so you're getting not only all of the essential nutrients mm -hmm. you're also not clogging up your internal organs mm. but you're also by it being raw you're, you're, you're consuming the actual lock that will mm. unlock the nutrition in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So effectively, when you have a, a sustained period of raw existence, you eat and there is no lethargy. You basically mm. get energy from Straight the food. Away, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very different. Um, and what the body wants is nourishment, mm. not food. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. That's very um, true. Yeah, That's the point Daniel you know, was saying yeah. earlier. I think well. we're often very addicted to foods. Yeah. And yeah. we're addicted not always to the best things. You know, we find that ourselves and our patients, um, you know, we crave 
cooked mm. food. It's comfort food. Really. Well, it's like it reminds us of home or yeah. being a child and you were given a plate of chips yeah. on a Friday or yeah. whatever the thing was. I mean, there's that sort of association with it. That's true, yeah. Emotional. And I think it's quick. It's quick energy. Like when you have something very rich, very complex kind of a food, you, predominantly animal products, but not only, then you kind of get kind of a quick fix if it's something sweet mm. or... Mm. You must find that, Caroline, with patients, you know, because you're also a psychotherapist, you must find that there's a huge link between sort of comfort eating and mm. repressing emotions. Oh, absolutely. They go... It was nourishment. Yeah, mm. nourishment, yeah. So if you think about nourishment on all levels, mm. it's, it wouldn't be uncommon that if there was a lack of nourishment okay. early on in life, mm. that people will spend their lifetimes trying to nourish themselves mm. using the most obvious, yeah. quickest yeah. available thing. Yeah. That's it, you know, and it's, I know from my own relationship with food, it's very, very complex. Mm. It's not a black and white scenario. Yeah. And you've got to be so gentle and yeah. careful and supportive of people yeah. in, and in that and journey. And as practitioners, mm. yeah, yeah. It's not about obliteration yeah. of yeah. Joy, but I think we as practitioners, <laughs> I hope that obliteration, of obliteration joy. Joy. <laughs> hopefully not. We must, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's about identify. Deepak Chopra said we need all of these: the five flavors, yes. bitter, sweet, yes. sour, salt. And you can get pungent. all of those in raw food. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. If anybody's been to a, you know proper gourmet raw food restaurant, mm -hmm. I mean, it's oh, just it's a mm -hmm. culinary feast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. what we need to be careful of, as when we're checking somebody's diet mm -hmm. and lifestyle mm -hmm. habits and eating habits and emotional connections. Mm -hmm. is that they're not numbing out yeah mm -hmm. you know yes. people can numb out and that's where mm -hmm. i'm yeah. sure psychotherapy yeah. has yeah. Yeah. you know well uh, it has its double-edged sword because you see a lot of this stuff but it's a balance between supporting people and giving them a push yeah, to yeah. actually take responsibility mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be empowered you're talking about being empowered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can yeah. empower themselves in general by making shifts around their time. Because it is a challenge, isn't it, for the patient? Like, let's say if they're very, very much ingrained in, in a certain type of a diet and trying desperately to get the nourishment, both emotionally and physically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a particular, maybe a low end type of a food, then trying to bring them into the other type of kind of higher quality. Mm -hmm. How do you. And it will also bring up, and I know people have seen it in the practice and in the clinic, that when people do shift the food yeah. and move towards a, even a more predominantly plant based diet, a lot of, mm -hmm. as we detox physically the body and the organs, a lot of emotional stuff begins to yes. surface and come and, and clear out. It's, yeah. it's, it's not something to be worried about, yeah. but mm. it does happen, doesn't Things it? Support. You take them foods out and yeah. it all comes yeah. up. Yeah. It does come yeah. up, you know. I think one of the things that's difficult for people, what, what I've encountered is that people find it socially difficult to be detoxing. Oh, I have a wedding on Wednesday, yeah, what will I do? That's true, yeah. mm. And, you know, they don't want to be seen to be odd or weird or ordering yeah, something different. And, but times have changed. I mean, I've been vegan for like 35 years and I was considered to be truly weird all those years ago. Mm. But now um, we find that, you know, in most cities we visit, you'll find vegan options everywhere. And it's yeah. kind of become cool. We had yeah. a student mm. who wanted to join our course recently and um, she was saying, well, I'm, you know, I'm vegetarian, but I don't want to become vegan just because it's cool. Yeah. We were like, hey, vegan is cool. And it I never was, was before, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, I think it's being seen increasingly as uh, a kind of ethical choice that you make for the planet as well. And yes. people see it like in the same group of things you can do, like not using plastic bags, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's happening on all levels, mm. uh, but I guess mm -hmm. if you do want to go to the epicentre of natural healing mm. through diet, through herbs, it's then master herb herbalism is it. Really? Yeah, yeah, but it's changing. I mean, I've honestly, like, I've, I've seen in the last, let's say, three years, uh, mm. an increase in the acceleration of speed of the movement of the world toward natural healing mm. and yeah, plant based. Really, it's just, yeah, I've yeah. seen a massive mm. shift. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. Young absolutely. people, school leavers are getting into mm. it yeah. and becoming really kind of heavy. Yeah. conscientious as well. Yeah, yeah, I just saw there was a, an article there I read as well. It was about a, um, a dairy company in New York, in upstate New York, um, family business, but quite a big one. And they were going down the tubes. Literally, and they changed instead of producing milk, cow's milk, they started producing almond milk, nut milks, and yeah. seed milks. And their business is really? booming, really? the share price Isn't has gone through the roof. That is I think natural healing, vegetarianism, veganism, and uh, environmental awareness is probably the fastest growing trend in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. And food is food is yeah. huge, mm -hmm. it's vegan based mm -hmm. is plenty, it totally, is yeah, perfect, it's and it's more available.